My name is Allison O'Daniel. My project is called The Tuba Thieves. In 2011, I heard a story on the radio about tubas that had been stolen from a high school in Los Angeles. A week later, tubas were stolen from a different school. The thefts continued. I decided I would make a film called The Tuba Thieves that did not focus on the thieves, but considered instead the act of listening and whether or not it could be removed from the ear. I imagined students in band practice with no instruments and considered the impact of losing the deepest sound in a band. I'm hard of hearing. I've worn hearing aids since I was three years old. I rely a lot on lip reading, and I'm moving toward fluency in American Sign Language. I made my first film with a cast and crew evenly split between hard of hearing and deaf and then hearing collaborators. And my intention is to deconstruct and reimagine the aural world and prioritize deaf and hard of hearing experiences of comprehension as a guide for process and narrative. The production of The Tuba Thieves reverses the usual process of filmmaking by starting with soundtracks that I commissioned from deaf artist and performer Christine Sun Kim, hearing painter and musician Steve Roden, and the late hearing composer Ethan Frederick Green. I provided each with non-sound based references to interpret into musical scores that would dictate the story of The Tuba Thieves. An example of four of the references. The, the path the Zamboni makes to clear away the snow and lay a fresh sheet of ice. The modernist sculptor Louise Nevelson's eyelashes. Hold on, that's not it. That's it. <laughs> um, the Maverick Concert Hall in Woodstock, New York. And then this text from a physicist who wrote a fan letter to Russian filmmaker Andrei Tarkovsky after seeing Tarkovsky's film, The Mirror. When I emailed the text to Christine Sun Kim, the words broke apart into this concrete poetry spacing, and it aptly described the process of how I was building this project and what it feels like to be hard of hearing. I wrote a screenplay in response to their music. It combines real narratives with fiction, and sound is the main character. The Tuba Thieves is about a deaf drummer, her hearing father, hearing boyfriend, and their varied relationships to music. Their story runs parallel to high school communities dealing with the tuba thefts. The film is interrupted by two historic concerts in which ideas of silence were prominent. The 1952 premiere of John Cage's 433 and a 1979 punk concert at a deaf social club in San Francisco. I'm gonna play a clip of disconnected segments from 10 of the scenes that I've completed. This is not a trailer. All right, when you quiet on set. Sound speed. Delta four, Charlie, take one, Mark.
2015, Um, in 2015, I began to exhibit the films with sculptures that are both formal and functional. The forms refer to the same references or originally provided to the composers, and the materials are acoustically reflective, absorbent, or sound dampening. I began this project filming certain scenes from the screenplay, piecing together budgets from various sources. This process enabled me to leave segments of the whole project inaccessible to the viewer building a vocabulary from missing information. The limited access to the story for both deaf and hearing audiences has hinted at a much larger project. My desire to transform sound from a source of frustration, entry, or refusal into a profound and malleable material has exploded my approach to storytelling. Subtitles and captions in the film and acoustic materials and exhibitions function as an unpredictable and fertile third narrative space. So far, I've made this project in the art world and I'm ready to expand into film. As a result of working with the producer and with the help of the Creative Capital Award, I'm ready to finish the entire feature film. In order to do that, I need funding. Um, I need to raise around $350,000. So I need help finding funders, private equity, grants, money to pay, to pay collaborators, and in-kind donations to offset production costs. I need time for revising, writing, research, and pre-production, so I'm seeking dog-friendly residencies. Um, I need mentorship. I'm seeking acceptance into filmmaking labs or fellowships from organizations that are into this method that I've been working, like Sundance, Cinereach, Berlinale, et cetera, et cetera. Um, finally, dialogue and networking with more people in film, including producers and other filmmakers for guidance and camaraderie. And just as a side note, I've seen so many amazing projects and I'm so inspired by everyone's work and all of you who are working across the spectrum of moving image, your work is so incredible and I just want to ask you to consider captioning your work because it's important and it really deserves. <laughs> it just, it really deserves to be heard and I want to hear it and there's so many other people who do too. So thank you so much.